So is it possible that renting a home could be a better option than buying a home? That's what we're going to dig into in this video. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about this topic. So hopefully we can clear those up for you in this video uh, and provide you with some reasons as to why in some cases, not all, but some cases, renting a home can actually be a better financial decision than buying a home. Now, this is not all cases, so we just have to make that very clear. But I want you to take these different uh, uh, key topics here that we're going to talk about today in this video and at least think about them uh, and process them for making that decision as to whether you should buy or rent a home. So without any further ado, let's get into this video. If you're new here to the channel, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. We're helping people make more money, save more money, and build a better financial future for themselves. So let's get started with this. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions or at least one of the biggest things that people think from a very early age from a very young age uh, people tell us they say renting is, is a waste of money and buying a home is always better and it's 100% of the time uh, renting is not good and 100% of the time buying is the better option but I want to kind of break that that knowledge today or at least debunk some of those ideas because the problem is look when you are uh, uh, thinking about the cost of renting versus buying. The problem is people don't factor in the cost of ownership. See, what it comes down to is that no matter what, there's going to be a cost of putting a roof over your head. Now, maybe you're paying that through rent or maybe you're paying that through property taxes and paying for an actual physical roof over your head by getting a new roof on the home that you might own. But regardless, there's going to be expenses on both sides of the spectrum and you need to consider that. So, so many people leave that out when they're thinking about uh, whether or not they should buy or rent and they say, well, if I own the home uh, after 30 years of paying off this mortgage, I'm gonna have $0 a month for my home expenses. But that's not the case. There's so many expenses. My parents own their home and they pay hundreds, probably well over $1,000 per month in total expenses for maintaining maintaining their property, if you want to get landscaping done, if you want a new roof, new water heater, there's a lot of expenses that are involved. Now, in some cases, homeowners insurance could cover some of those different uh, things, but at the same time, there's going to be expenses that could be incurred when you own a home. So you need to consider that before actually making that decision. Now, another thing that, that people don't take into consideration is something called opportunity cost. So what would be the opportunity cost uh, if, if you are living in your home, how much could you be renting that home out for to somebody else? See, that's a cost there that you could be making money on that home that you're living in. Now, you need a place to live. Everybody needs a place to live, but you need to factor in that cost as well uh, going forward with your financial decision on this. So if you're a little bit confused on opportunity cost, you can dig into a little bit deeper. Uh, maybe just do a simple Google search on opportunity cost, but it's something that I use through every financial decision, uh, making that decision with just using this basic concept of opportunity cost. It's really basic, but it's so incredibly important to understand. And that's something that people don't consider when they think about renting versus buying. Now, there's a couple more reasons why I personally choose to rent over buying a home. Uh, this is my personal decision. Uh, it's not always the better option to rent. In a lot of cases, I'll be honest with you, a lot of cases buying a home for the long run can be a better financial decision than renting. Uh, it's, it's been proven in a lot of cases that it is better. But there's still some reasons as to why renting could be a better option for you right now at this moment. And one of those reasons uh, is, is uh, because renting allows you to have much more mobility and this can end up saving you a lot more money as well. So a lot of uh, uh, people today will move from one job to the other every few years. And if that's the case, buying a home in say Philadelphia and then moving to Colorado Boulder three years later and then moving to Los Angeles three years after that and then moving to uh, somewhere in Tennessee four years after that. Uh, and if, if, if you're buying a home every single time when you're moving, uh, that could work out for you, but in a lot of cases, it doesn't work out for people. So I wanna explain this to you. Now, when you're buying and selling homes uh, quite often every few years because you might be moving from one job to the other or one state to the other, uh, this could, really incur a lot of costs. First of all, there's there's closing fees, there's selling costs, there's gonna be thousands of dollars for that. Uh, but something that people don't think about is that say you buy a home for $400,000 in Philadelphia. And two and a half years later, you decide you're gonna to move to Colorado Boulder uh, uh, because you want to uh, move jobs. Or your employer says, you're moving from this place to the other, we're making you do this or else you're losing your job. It happens to people, right? Uh, and and if that's the case, say you bought your house for $400,000, three years later or two and a half years later when you're thinking about moving to a new place, that house, maybe it's worth $300,000. Now, in a lot of cases, that's, that's not what happens. Uh, most homes go up in value over time, but if you find yourself at the wrong time period, that home could lose value, especially if it's uh, uh, right during the financial uh, housing crisis, right? So say that house goes from $400,000 to $300,000. Well, maybe you just took a mortgage out on that home for $400,000 to get that home. And now the house is worth $300,000. So if you wanna sell that, uh, you're essentially out 
$100,000. It's called being underwater or upside down on a loan. And this can cause a lot of stress to families or people who are buying homes. And then if they want to move to a new place, uh, they're faced with a serious financial issue. So this is just something that you need to consider. Uh, it's, it's not something that should necessarily hold you back from owning a home. But the whole purpose of creating this video is to at least uh, hopefully kind of make people think a little bit further outside the box and think about the potential risks that could be involved with buying and, and, and selling homes quite frequently moving from one place to the other. So that's something that you do need to think about. Now, uh, one of the other reasons as to why renting could be better is because there's a much lower down payment. So you're probably paying your first month's rent, maybe your last month's rent to move into the place uh, versus uh, paying maybe 10, 20, $30,000 or more to buy a home. You need a down payment to buy a home, at least 3%, maybe 5, 10%, 20% down to buy a home. And you want to think about the opportunity cost behind that as to what you could be doing with that money, that, that down payment, instead of using it uh, going towards your home. So a great example of this, say you have $50,000 that you're going to use for a down payment on a home. Well, what if you took that $50,000 and instead rented uh, and, and use that $50,000 to get a positive return on investment of, say, 10% or 20% per year if you could pull something off, uh, then you could see how much money you can make off of that and run the numbers. And in some cases, that shows that renting could be a better option than buying. That's why I personally choose to rent at the moment because I want to take all the capital that I'm making now and putting it back into my business, putting it back into investments and netting a higher return on investment than it would be for myself to lock up a lot of cash just for a place for myself to live. Now, we're not talking about real estate investments. This is talking about a place for you personally to live. Real estate investments, that's a totally different ball game. And in just about every case, it's going to be a better option buying a real estate investment. I don't, I don't think you can rent a real estate investment. Now, another bonus to renting uh, is, is predictability. See, this actually has a lot of weight, at least for myself, knowing that uh, if my rent is, say, $900 per month, I know how much it's going to be every single month. Whereas if you own a home, there's a lot more variable costs involved uh, that could mess up your budget or at least uh, kind of hinder some different things uh, for your financial future, budgeting especially, which I think is really important. You know, whenever you look at investments, if you know how much a company is going to be bringing in every year, it's going to allow you to have much less risk involved uh, because you know the future outcome of that. So personally, when I know that if I'm paying $900 a month per month, every single month, it allows me to uh, budget better and allocate my, my assets in a much smarter way versus uh, if I don't know how much I'm going to have to have because maybe some type of expense pops up when I'm owning a home that I'm going to have to cover in the future. So having that predictability of renting is a bonus for myself, and that's why I choose to personally rent. Now, there's a couple more reasons as to why renting could be better than buying. One that I would want to just touch on ever so briefly, uh, and, and this isn't one to necessarily go off of too much, but I wanted to bring it up uh, regardless, uh, and that is uh, renting could be a better option than buying if it's 2007. So it, you know, it's not always a good option to try to predict the housing market or any market. I choose to not really try to uh, predict the stock market or various other markets because there's so many different factors that uh, go into play here that it's almost impossible to truly predict the outcome or of, of the housing market. Uh, but if it's 2007 and you're looking around and you're seeing that uh, so, some of the homes in your particular area are going up double digit percentages every single year and a home that was worth $100,000 three years ago is worth $200,000 today, you might want to think about uh, maybe renting over buying, uh, thinking about you know whether or not there might be a bubble in the housing market. So if you see prices rising drastically, uh, then that could be a reason as to why you might want to hold back a little bit. Like I said, timing the market, it's not always the best option. But if you see markets going up very, very, very quickly, uh, very rapidly, then maybe you do want to take a step back and say that you're going to choose to rent for a little bit longer uh, instead of getting in at a time that could be very high. But uh, that's, that's something that's a little bit risky. And to be honest, uh, sometimes you'll see markets going up and not go down for 30 years. They could just continue to go up. And uh, th those slow times might just kind of uh, stagnate for a little while, the home prices, uh, but they don't go down. So if you're waiting for a great deal, don't wait for another housing crisis to buy a home. Uh, but at the same time, uh, think about kind of being able to time it ever so slightly, at least in the sense where if you're seeing those prices going up tremendous amounts and you might want to hold back for a little while. So uh, those are the different reasons why renting could be a better option than buying. Like I said, this is kind of rare. This isn't always the case. And for a lot of people, buying is still the better financial decision for the long term, especially if you know where you're going to live, you have your place locked down, you have your family in one area and you, you want to live in that specific area, then buying home for the long term is almost always a 
a better option. So uh, thanks for watching the video. Any questions, comments, leave them down below, uh, and I'll see everybody next time.